What's up, YouTube? This is the 82 and Old Podcast. This time, we're taking a look at Lenny Wilkins, born October 28th, 1937. Now, he was born in bedford Stuy, Brooklyn. So his father was African-American and his mom was Irish. And he was raised Catholic. And he went to a boys' high school, Wilkins would actually be teammates with Major League professional player Tommy Davis. And he played with Mikey Fisher. So, Wilkins was a two-time All-American, 1959 and 1960, at Providence College. He led his team to their first NIT appearance in 1959 and to the NIT Finals in 1960. When he graduated... Wilkins was with 1,193 points and second ranker in history. And today he's ranked around 20th, I want to say. And his number 14 jersey was retired. So he had a very great collegiate career um, at Providence College. But he declared for the draft. Now... He was selected by the St. Louis Hawks in the first round, the sixth pick in the 1960 NBA draft. Now, the thing about this uh, the St. Louis Hawks team, they, they had won a championship two years prior in 1958. But it was the Boston Celtics that were winning championships now because Boston won in 57. 59 and 60 at this point. So St. Louis was looking to get back to title contention. Um, they had just come off of lo losing the NBA Finals in 1960 in seven games to the Celtics. So in 60 61, Lenny Wilkins' first year with the Hawks, they go 51 and 28. And their coach, Paul Seymour, they built a good team. He built a good team here. So you had Bob Pettit, who was still in his prime. He was putting up 27 points per game, 20 rebounds. And you had Cliff Hagen with 22 points, 9 rebounds. You had Clyde Lovelett, who had 22 points, 10 rebounds. Uh, they just had a lot of good role players, too, like Woody Salisbury. Larry Faust, Cy Green, Johnny McCarthy. But Lenny Wilkins joins the team. He puts up 11 points per game. He wasn't playing all the minutes yet. He was only playing 25 minutes per game. And they go back to the finals. Unfortunately, they would lose to the Boston Celtics in the first in the four games to one. Now going into the 61-62 season. They would go through a lot of coach changes, and they would finish the year 29 and 51. And here's a crazy fact. They went through so many coaches. They had, like, Paul Seymour. He went 5 and 9. Andrew Levine, who went 20 and 40. And here's something I, I bet most NBA fans don't know. Bob Pettit actually coached the Hawks for some of those games. He coached six games that year as a player. Um, but, yeah, they went 29-51. Wasn't a good year for them. Lenny Wilkins only played 20 games that year. And they missed the playoffs for the first time in a while. But Lenny Wilkins, despite only playing 20 games... He was uh, improving as a player. And anyways, on this team, he was the third best player at this time. Bob Pettit would be the number one player, best player, then Cliff Hagen, then Lenny. Now going into the 62-63 season, 
First, though, I should mention why he only played 20 games in 61-62. It was because uh, of military service. But 62-63, they go 48-32. and 32. You know, and I think a lot of uh, the reason why they struggled the year before was Lenny Wilkins being gone. Because you look at the 62-63 season now, Lenny is there for 75 games, and he's starting to take more of a more of a starter role. Uh, he plays for 34 minutes per game, and now they have Zomo Beatty. So this is a really good team, and they go, they lose in the conference uh, the which well at the time was called the divisional finals, uh, in seven games. To the Los Angeles Lakers. And Lenny Wilkins, he'd put up 13 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists. Now going into the 63-64 season, they'd go 46-36, and 36, losing to the San Francisco Warriors in the divisional finals, which at the time would be like conference finals. Um... Lenny would put up 12 points, 4.3 assists, or 4.3 rebounds, 4.6 assists. This would be his second straight All-Star appearance. Now, going into the 64-65 season, that would be his third straight All-Star appearance. They'd go 45-35, and and they'd lose in the first round to the Baltimore Bullets. And this would be Bob Pettit's last year on the Hawks. He retires. So this and so now the team is starting to build around Money Wilkins, Zelmo Beatty. But going into the 65-66 season, they'd lose in the Western Divisional Finals in seven games to the Lakers. And he had a pretty good series. He put up 14 points. Five rebounds, seven assists. And his 14 points may seem kind of low, but they had a lot of good scorers on this team. They had Cliff Hagen, Joe Caldwell, Bill Bridges, Richie Guerin, and, of course, Zelmo Beatty. But uh, going into the 66-67 season, Lenny would put up 17 points, five assists, and five rebounds. And this team will lose in the divisional finals against the San Francisco Warriors. Now going into the 67-68 season, this would be, I'd say, Lenny's best Hawks team. Because he wasn't there for the championship team. But this would be his best best team. Uh, They go 56-26. And... and Zelmo would have 21 points per game, 11 rebounds. Lenny stepped up his scoring. He's now at 20 points per game, 8 assists, and 5 rebounds. They had other good players like Bill Bridges, Paul Silas, Don Ole. So this team realistically should have won a title, but they lost to the San Francisco Warriors, who were her 43-win team. They choked in that first round series. And Lenny Wilkins in that first round series, uh, he averaged 18 points per game. And I should mention they had Lou Hudson, too, on that team, who would be an all-star for the Hawks in in the 70s. So this team choked. That was their best opportunity to make it back to the final. And that would actually be his final year on the Hawks in the 67-68 season. So at this point, he's 30 years old. He's got five all-star appearances with the Hawks. And we're just now starting to see him break out as a scorer. Like I said, he put up his career best at that point. So the Hawks traded him to the Seattle Supersonics. Barry Clemens, and (laughs) kind of a lopsided trade. I kind of wonder what the Hawks would have been 
if they would have kept Lenny and paired him up with Pete Maravich and Lou Hudson. But that's a topic for another day. So he still had a lot of gas in the tank. So the 68-69 season would be his first year. Uh, his first year with the Seattle Supersonics, and he was an all-star again. And he puts up 22 points per game, 6.2 rebounds, and 8.2 assists. Now, this Sonics team wasn't very good. They went 30-52. and 52. They didn't have a lot of no recognizable players on this team. Uh, the, the Sonics team was fairly new at this point. This is just their second season. And I think this is what Seattle was trying to do. They were trying to get a marketable star to get fans in the in the seats. So Lenny Wilkins starts coaching the Sonics while playing. And this wasn't uncommon to see at the time. Like I mentioned, Bob Pettit had done it. Uh, Bill Russell was more notable because he won his last two championships coaching the Celtics while playing. So he was a play. So Lenny Wilkins was a player coach with the Sonics in the 69 70 season. Now, in the 70 71 season, the Sonics would go 38 and 44. Lenny Wilkins would put up 19.8 points per game, 4.5 rebounds per game, 9.2 assists per game, which was his first and only assist title. They started getting a little bit better. They got Spencer Haywood from the ABA, who would develop into an all-star with them. And so going into the 71-72 season, the Seattle Supersonics would go 47-35. and And like I said, he's still player coach. This team would be built around Lenny Wilkins and Spencer Haywood. They go 47 and 35, but they don't make the playoffs. And that's because of how the playoffs were set up back then. How their divisions were and everything. Now, going into the 72 73 season, he'd be gone from there. They traded him to the Cleveland Cavaliers. And when he went to the Cavaliers, he. He was still putting up efficient numbers because for 72-73, he put up 20 points per game, 8, re eight assists, 4.6 rebounds. Uh, he was an all-star. He was 35 years old. The Cleveland Cavaliers, he didn't coach that that year, but they'd go 32-50. and 50. So they didn't make the playoffs. And I want to mention, too, he was traded to the Cavs for uh, Butch Beard and Barry Clemens, so it wasn't it wasn't much of a trade, you know, kind of lopsided, just trying to get rid of him. And um, his second year in Cleveland for seventy three seventy four, they don't make the playoffs either. They go twenty nine and fifty three. There's not a lot of noticeable people on this team either. I mean, you got guys like Bingo Smith. Austin Carr, that's about it. And that kind of, and then Lenny, after that, he would go to the Portland Trailblazers. And this would be his final year in the NBA. Uh, and how it worked is the Cavs kind of sent a trade. It was they sold his player rights to Portland. Um, and anyways, he plays 65 games for Portland, and he's the player coach. And Bill Walton was there. It was his rookie season. They had Jeff Petrie, Sidney Wicks. It was a good team. Uh, they just they just weren't ready yet. They weren't the Portland of later in that decade. And... They only went 38 and 44. And that would be Lenny Wilkins' final year as a player. And he goes on and he still coaches. So 
after his year at Portland, he goes back and he coaches Seattle. And they go to the conference. They go to the finals in 78. And 79, they go back to the finals and they're champions. So they lose one, they win one. And then he has multiple good years with the Sonics. They win they win 52 games uh, in 1979. They win 56 games in 1980. So I'm just giving you an idea of what their records were like. And he would leave coaching the Sonics, and he'd go to the Cavs. And in 86-87, he'd, he'd start coaching Cleveland all the way up to 92-93. And I think a lot of people know how good those Cavs teams were. They were supposed to be the up-and-coming team, not the Chicago Bulls at the time. They had a good young core. Although it was the Bulls that ended up overthrowing the Cavs. But nonetheless, they had some really great teams. Uh, and then you go, and then he goes over to the Atlanta Hawks from ninety-three, ninety-four. To ninety nine two thousand, this learned he had some good years with the Hawks, like ninety six ninety seven, uh, ninety four. But he had some poor years, like ninety nine two thousand. They went twenty eight and fifty four, but they were a good team, but not quite championship caliber. Like ninety eight, they went fifteen thirty two. 97, they went 56 and 26. So they were like always good, but not good enough to get it done and not bad enough to get a good pick. So he leaves Atlanta and starts coaching the Toronto Raptors from 2000, 2001 season to the 0102 season. So he coached Vince Carter, which is, I think, is pretty cool. And then he would go and coach the Knicks, which. This is the worst Knicks team ever. <laughs> the worst Knicks era, I should say. This is the early 2000s after Ewing and all those guys were gone. They'd, uh, he would coach there in 4 5 He'd win seven. He would win just, I think it was, 33 games. So He's ranked one of the all-time best coaches of all time. Uh, he was select. He was just selected to one of the the top ten coaches of all time, and his his coaching record is pretty amazing. Um, he was named the fifteen greatest coaches in NBA history. That's uh, also with the seventy five list. So this year they had the top seventy five players, but they also had the fifteen greatest coaches in NBA history. But in addition to that, back in 97 when they did the 50 greatest players, he was named one of the 10 greatest coaches of all time. He's the 1994 Coach of the Year, and he had multiple Coaches of the Month. So he had a pretty impeccable resume, and he would win 1,332 games. He won 53% of his games as a coach. So, he's a Hall of Fame coach and a Hall of Fame player, which, to me, that's amazing. And he's still alive. He's 84 years old. And the reason I bring this up is I have always admired his, outspoken, his outspokenness on social issues. Uh, a few years ago, when the NFL protests were going on, he was very spot on. And I encourage everyone to look up his his comments on the Colin Kaepernick situation. So that's something I've always admired about him. And I've always read about his teammates always said he was the best person to play with. He was very kind, very fun to be around, great personality, and players who were Playing under him when he was their coach, always liked playing for him. So he's built a heck of a resume. So he's a nine-time All-Star. He had one assist championship. He didn't win any championships as a player. Uh, his For his career, he averaged 16.5 points, 
6.7 assists, 4.7 rebounds. But I think his numbers are a little misleading because you look at his scoring numbers, right? The 16.7. A lot of his bigger scoring seasons came later in his career when he took more of a scoring role. I think his numbers could have been much better had he been primary scorer earlier on. Because those years that he was averaging 11 points, he could have been more like a 21, 22 point per game scorer. But it is what it is. He's still a top 75 player of all time. Let me know what you think down below. Lenny Wilkins.